what the fuck is up with Lee Mei? Not that Lee Mei, this Lee Mei. Okay, tangent, why the f Fuck, would you bother to cast Kelly Hu as this character, only to then slash her charisma score in half? Hello? Anybody home? Let's take the tastiest gourmet burger from the finest restaurant and turn it into a fucking McChicken a week old with a side of depression. It's like hiring Michelangelo to paint the Sistine Chapel so you can then stamp Minecraft art all over it. Fuck that. I have a history of raging against the machine that is the woke latrine, and I see my work is more necessary than ever. Closing the tangent box before it consumes a Saul. What is Lee Mei's power? What is she using? Day 16 of asking what the fuck is up with Lee Mei? Everyone keeps asking me, what are Lee Mei's powers? What element does she use? Is math related to science? Is math related to science? Everyone's like, what is this? What is this? <laughs> hey, you there. Yes, you. The resting bitch face with the unusually purple beanie. Can you tell us what it is? Hmm. <laughs> Actually, that's what your channel is about. Oh, then he. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, I've spent a big chunk of videos trying to make sense of all the strange, wacky, eclectic powers that various Mortal Kombat characters use, and find some kind of logical consistency between them, mostly because I hate myself. I even made up a full power system that explains it all. Don't watch it, it'll rot your brain. But one character I did not include in that explanation is Aunt May. No, it's Lee May. Lee Mei is an interesting character. She's an outworlder. We don't see many of those that aren't mutated sex dungeon monsters. She was trained by both Boraicho and Shujinko. Boraicho's like the premier trainer in the MK universe, somewhere between a Yoda and a Jiraiya. She technically won a Mortal Kombat tournament, nearly got her soul imprisoned into an ancient warrior's corpse, and came back a changed woman with a newfound crush on the powerful being that the mummified corpse she was temporarily linked to served, the old Dragon King Onai. Sadly, this isn't explored to any significant degree, yet I always wondered what you could do with this. It's almost like a Lovecraftian thing, where you get touched by this otherworldly entity and start experiencing dreams, visions, you see the world differently, you're more aware of some primordial cosmic entity and you're inexorably drawn to it. This ties nicely to the one being, which, as I noted in other videos, also has Lovecraftian elements to it. Is it just Onaga that Lee May developed a connection with, or is it the one being working through Onaga. And if it's just Onaga, then is it simply because some part of that mummified soldier imprinted onto me something overwritten or uncopied? Or is it because Li Mei truly felt enthralled by the ancient dragon emperor, the one true divine ruler of Outworld? We know precious little about Onaga's rule, but it is implied that it wasn't half bad, at least not compared to Shao Kahn's iron fisting of the realm. Onaga is loosely modeled after the Chinese emperors of old, those with a divine right to rule, so he seems to have been deified and adored by and large. And despite being a rather unrelenting ruler in his own right, Outworld seems to have flourished under him. He also took good care of his zealous army and resurrected them every time they died in battle, earning their adoration. So what if Li Mei's sudden adoration of him is genuine? After all, if you experience hundreds of years worth of history and memories and feelings, all in one brief moment, that's bound to leave a most powerful imprint on your brain. It's how I make such good first impressions. Anyway, one of many things that maybe could have should have been explored. In the new timeline, Li Mei exists. She's there. So anyway, let's see what the fuck is up with Li Mei's powers. This will get rambly. There are several possibilities here, and none of them are perfect explanations. The first being fire. The fire element is the cleanest explanation. Deadly Alliance gives her a sparkly fireball-ish attack, Deception gives her a pair of flaming heels to wear, and even though her MK12 incarnation clearly wants this stuff to look like fireworks, well, what the fuck is fireworks? We'll get into that a little later, but in terms of consistency, fireworks don't really gel with anything else, and even if that is what these attacks are, they clearly emit heat and light, so you could log this as fire if you wanted to. Oh, but what about the dragon, the dragon. Yes, she manipulates this stuff's shape to resemble a dragon. What of it? Liu Kang does the same thing, so that's clearly within the realm of possibility. However, when something looks so different compared to actual fire, one questions whether or not this should even be considered raw flame anymore. And more to the point, there is another element that I made up in my totally not insane head along with many others that shares all these properties, the heat, the explosiveness, the shape manipulation, and that also accounts for the trippy your visuals that look like you had one too many shrooms at a Christmas show, and that element is force. 
Force is a mixture of fire and water. In the magic system that I developed for the MK universe, it's a form of energy that possesses the properties of both of these. It has heat and explosive qualities like fire, but also swirls and flows and can be manipulated into all sorts of shapes like water. Force can look like a lot of things, but it tends to take the shape of either fluid, caustic, explosive, and unstable mixtures, or things that loosely resemble lasers and the like. Sound familiar? These things look kinda lasery, they explode on impact, they take very various shapes like sky lanterns and ethnic minority dragons, and even the countless little particles that they explode into are consistent with both the older, but somehow hotter, Lee Mei's projectiles, as well as Johnny and Sonia's that behave the same way on impact. This is probably the most foolproof answer. Force can burn, explode, propel you forward, and look very flashy while doing so. But listen to those sound effects. <laughs> They clearly went all in on the fireworks thing. It's supposed to look, behave, and sound like fireworks, so I guess the real answer is Li Mei is Jubilee. Problem solved. Can force emulate fireworks to that degree? Or is there another element that's better suited for this type of trickery? As it happens, there is. Illusion is a combination of water and air, and is meant to play tricks on the opponent's mind, making them see and feel things that are not entirely there. If there's one compound element that can look like whatever you want, it's illusion. You can use the speed and ethereal nature of the air and the reflective properties of water, as well as its potential for shape, to create all sorts of visual artifacts, blurring effects, rapid movement that sort of fakes a teleport, and make it seem like you're conjuring various objects from thin air. Now hold on, I hear you saying. Fireworks are more or less fiery in nature, and there ain't no fire in water plus air. Which is true, but again, it doesn't really matter what this compound is specifically made of. What matters is the result can be made to look like almost anything. There are two specific arguments to be made for this being illusion, one that's fun and one that's dumb. First, most illusion techniques share the color purple or some similar hue. That's the dumb one. Just because something has a particular color doesn't mean anything, especially when you're talking about about an element that can be dyed in any color you want. Still, on aesthetic and storytelling levels, it does provide a certain consistency. Kitana uses air, Melina uses illusion, and Sindel, their mother, has both under her repertoire, which can be interpreted as the mother passing down one element to each of her daughters. And sure enough, both Sindel's and Melina's illusion attacks have some kind of purple hue to them. Furthermore, in the MK12 timeline, Li Mei was fairly close to Sindel and a guardian of the royal family, so it makes a certain amount of sense that she'd emulate the queen she respects so much and vowed to protect. But the more pertinent argument is the way she uses this thing in some of her attacks. Both in her new and old incarnations, she likes to imbue her punches and kicks with it, which I like to interpret as her adding a bit of illusory bite to her attacks to make them feel more painful and damaging than they actually are. A rather peculiar take, but one I find to be very fun. We see MK12 Quan do something similar with his purple portal portal, and his MKX purple portal steals meter, which is another case of him weakening the opponent without really weakening him. So illusion is a fairly elegant way to explain Li Mei's powers, accounting for all the neat particle effects as well as the various constructs she creates, except if you were expecting these to somehow actually be real fireworks, the answer kinda blue balls you hard. Unless, what if this actually is? Fireworks. Fireworks are low explosive pyrotechnic devices. Most of them consist of some kind of paper, pasteboard tube, or casing filled with a combustible material. Pellets that contain salts, metal powders, and various other compounds. Uh, not with a K. When kindled, all these things create a great variety of sparkling colored shapes. Now, Paper, metal powders, lead shot, mustard seeds, and whatever else they use for fireworks, all of these things come from the ground, these pyrotechnic cores are then sprayed with water, and then you ignite them to cause the actual explosion. Which means, Li Mei's attacks could be earth plus water plus fire. They don't call me cynical, overanalyze what to have for breakfast warlock for nothing. I don't, by the way. I just eat whatever's lying around. The only problem with this explanation is, that's really the only instance of firework attacks, and I've said many times that I don't want to create new compound elements just for the sake of creating them, and then have only one fringe character use them that one time in that one game in that one fatality. That's not really a power system, that's just making up random shit on the spot. Now, it may very well be that other special moves from other characters fit this description, but I couldn't be bothered to comb through the entire collective MK roster yet, so I'm open to 
to being convinced, but I'm not easily convinced. That's pretty much my life's motto. So, fire, force, illusion, or exothermic redox reactions, aka fireworks. The time has come to do something experimental and unique. Instead of deciding on my own, I'm including you, yes you, with a silly grin and the coke stain on your shirt into the conversation. I've posted a poll with this very question. It's linked below in the description and the pinned comment, and you can contribute to finding the answer that I will then make canon to my fanon. Or I might just ignore all of you and pick whichever of the four I want anyway. Or pick none of the four and spontaneously decide that Lee Mei uses the get fucked and die element.